It's a brand new season, a brand new episode of the Maximize Your Brand podcast. So excited to be with you today because I am ready to start interviewing some brand new guests. And today we're going to be talking about collecting the cash. Every small business, every person that I know who's an entrepreneur always should be about collecting the cash. And our guest today is an expert on how to do that. And I can't wait to talk to her. You don't want to miss this episode. Let's get started. going on everyone welcome to another season of the maximize your brand podcast always excited to be sharing with you each and every week we have been on a little hiatus about three months you know i just needed to take a break and a break i took (laughs) so thank you for joining me today as you know i always like to ask you to type your name in the comments let me know where you're tuning in from what city are you tuning in from? That helps me to know that we are close to where I live in Nashville or far away in other countries or other cities because I know that we are being downloaded in more than 42 different countries. Today, I'm excited because we have a guest today who's going to be talking to us all about collecting the cash. You know, as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, You know, it is always important to be thinking about profit in your business that, you know, I hear people talk about the revenue that they generate in their business all the time, six figure revenue, seven figure revenue in your business. But, you know, the question that I always have is how much did you keep in your business? What was the profit that you were able to keep from running that business? I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day, a fraternity brother of mine, and I was sharing with him that, hey, you really need to start thinking about how do you have a lean business? That what are some of those unnecessary costs that you're paying each and every week in your business that could be automated or that could be more efficient? Because we're in the business of making money. We're in the business of creating income. And we're also in the business of keeping as much of that income as possible. Now, I'm not saying slack on your services or slack on your value. But what I am saying is, how do you be more efficient so that you can have more profit in your business? Well, that's what my guest today is going to be talking to us about. And let me share a little bit with you about her. I'm going to pull up her bio and so I can read it and share that with you. My guest today is Dr. D. Bowden. Dr. D. Bowden is the creator of Collect the Cash. She works with small businesses who want to solve their cash flow problems. She is on a mission to keep small businesses profitable. After collecting $6 million in 60 days while working for a small IT company, Dee recognized that small businesses also fall prey to revenue loss because they don't collect the outstanding invoices. Her revenue recovery strategies have been featured in Forbes, Yahoo Finance, VIP Global, and Black Enterprise, and Thrive Global Magazines. And so without prolonging any more we're going to go ahead and bring in our guest, Dr. D. Bowden. What's going on, Dr. D? 
Hello, good afternoon. So let me start with the corrections. My last name is actually Bowden, so it's actually Bowden. Dr. D. Okay, Bowden. Thank you. No thank worries, you, no worries. I know. In the South, they say Bowden. I'm from the North, so, so we, we say Bowden. <laughs> Bowden, okay. Thank you. For no worries, but we're good. Me. We're good. We're good. Thank you, first of all. As, as I like to say, thanks, thanks to Good Home Training. Thank you so much, Marquise, for allowing me to be on the Maximize Your Brand Bot. I'm sorry, Maximize Your Brand Bot podcast. I'm super excited to be here today. I'm sorry, a little bit nervous. Here, let me let me let me slow down. Let me just bring it down. Slow down. Like, take a breath. Take a breath. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a yes, conversation. Yes. So, yeah, it's right. a conversation. Yeah. So anyway, excited to be here. Um, to your to your to your to your podcast uh community. Thank you for being here, and I'm excited to share with you about collect the cash because this this is one of those topics that most people are like. Man, I don't want to talk to anybody about collecting on their cash. They, I just need the people to pay me. <laughs> I just need you to pay me. Stop, stop, stop holding up my coins. Just, just, just. I submit the invoice. Just pay me. Let's go. Yeah, but yeah. it's not that. It's not always that simple. Not always, always that simple. simple. It really is. Well, isn't. Dr. D, I gave sure. a little bit of brief bio, but I would love for you to go in more detail just to share with the listening audience more about yourself. Sure thing. Well, first of all, so I'm Dr. D. Bowden. I'm originally from Boston. Now I live in the great state of Maryland. Fun facts about me. I love Ferris wheels. I love smooth jazz. And if you are you are a wine drinker, I love both. I love great wines, both red and white. My journey to become uh, Dr. D and actually beginning to collect the cash started like this. So about 15 or so years ago, I worked for a small IT company outside of Boston where I'm from. If you've ever worked for corporate or government or any company, you know how it is. They usually hire you and they say, welcome aboard. Here's your cubicle. Here's your box. And I jokingly say, here's your plant. So in my case, I got hired to join this collections team and they said, listen, we have $8 million in outstanding receivables and we need you to collect it. And I was like, y'all have how much? They said $8 million. This is a small IT company. We're talking less than 100 people and they've got $8 million in sales on the books, but not in the bank which is where collect the cash comes from. I usually say it this way, collect the cash. The sale is not complete until the money's in the bank, but you must collect it first. So back to the story. You get hired, give me the list, and they say, we need to collect this money. So I'm a believer, so I had a short conversation with God, kind of went like this. Hey God, yes D, how are you? Overall God, I'm fantastic, but your word says, if you lack wisdom, you need to ask. So I'm, I'm asking you for a clue of how am I supposed to collect $8 million? So when I got quiet, I discovered that business to business collections is three things. It's problem solving. It's answering the question of what had happened was. I say that jokingly, but it's really answering that question because if you've provided excellent service, excellent products, you've billed and you haven't gotten paid, you want to know what happened. And so I jokingly say what had happened was that's the question we're answering. And the second piece is customer service. Whenever you do service or provide a product to a customer, the goal is to make sure they have a great customer experience. And in this case, we had a, we had a, we, that wasn't happening with the company because $8 million was outstanding. Then the secret sauce is gratitude. I personally believe that saying thank you, whether people, whether it's in business or personal, I believe that's important. So my secret sauce is gratitude and it's saying thank you for the people who take your phone call, who um, research your invoice. And, and the favorite part is cut that check. <laughs> when you get that check, you're like, oh, okay. So in 60 days, as, as Marquise read, I collected $6 million. And then the unthinkable happened. The CEO of the company says, listen, let's come downstairs. Now, if you've ever been in sales, you know, if you're doing sales, you get, you get, you get a commission off, 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 the, off the sales you make. Well, in our case, when, and using AR, you get a bonus. No, we come downstairs and he says, listen, I wanna thank you for everything you've done. That's across all the departments. So that's sales, order entry, contracts, order fulfillment, billing, and my lane, receivables. Thank you all. We've made an executive decision. We're closing the company today. And you got mm. six, you got 30 minutes to go get your box and leave the building. This is two months before Christmas. Wow. And so a hundred people, including myself, and who is a part-time person, walked out with our box and we're like, did this really just happen to us? They're like, yeah, this really just happened to us. And so many years after going through the emotions of, oh my gosh, I can't believe this just happened. And I'm watching this small business. And this is where all, this is where, this was the, um, the, the, the start of why Collect the Cash got birth is because I worked for this small company. We're, mm -hmm. we're talking 100 people. I will never know, and this is why I started, I wrote the book and why I started this whole campaign about Collect the Cash. I will never know, even if with the amount of money I collected personally, along with my team, if that would have saved the company. But I decided that this part needs to happen, that sales and accounts receivable, they go together. And as, as people are talking about, they've made all this money. Yeah, you might have made all that money in sales, but is the money in the bank and have you collected it? And that's why Collect the Cash got birth. 
That's so, so good. Have you collected it? Is it mm-hmm. in the bank? Right. Right. That and part. So we really have to, you know, understand the concepts around that. And so many people start businesses, but yet don't necessarily have the savviness or the knowledge base on how to properly set that business up uh, financially and how to properly set that business up as it pertains to bank accounts. And so I thought this would be a great show to just start the season off because I know that many of those who follow me are aspiring small business owners or aspiring um, individuals who uh, want to be entrepreneurs or those who are Mm -hmm. currently in the process of building a current business. And I thought, you know, we rarely talk about the money. Yeah. We rarely talk about how to set things up properly for our businesses and how to be a profitable business. Because as I stated in the intro, we talk a lot about generating revenue. Uh-huh. We talk a lot about sales. But at the end of the day, it's about what do you have left at the end of all of those sales and generated revenue? And so we're just going to hop on in. And I know you have written a book around this. And so I really want the high level conversation around, you know, your steps and the things that you believe are most important as it pertains to collecting the cash. So my first question uh, for you today is why is it important for us to have the proper framework or the proper structure in place when we start our business as it pertains to collecting the money great question well number one if you don't know basically i'll say i'll say it this way what gets tracked gets measured and if you don't track it how do you know so what i teach what i teach at at a very basic level is this every business owner whether you're a solopreneur or a small business or or beyond you need to have a what i call a tracking system it looks like this number one column number one is sales is the name of your customer column number two What's the contract number? Call number three. What's the dollar value? If is the contract worth a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars? It doesn't matter. But you have should have the name of the customer, the contract number, then the amount of the contract number. Column number four. What did you sell them? Sneakers. It doesn't matter. You should be tracking that. Then column number five would be the invoices. When are you billing them? When are you when are you supposed to submit the invoice to them? And then column number six is when do you get paid? And the last column is notes. That seven those seven steps or how, how every business owner should track and know how many customers do you have. Whether you have one customer or many customers, that's really important. The second piece is, when do you build them? Now, are you setting them up to be built every 15 days, every 30 days? How do you know? How, many, how do you know when, you're, when your payments are coming in if you're not tracking that? And then what happens if they miss a payment? If you have a note section and they've missed it, you, can, you have a, a reminder that's gonna remind you to go, okay, the payment was scheduled for this date, they missed it. I'll give you a perfect example. Everybody that's listening to us, whether you're team iPhone or Android, you have a cell phone. This happens to you every month because when you when you purchase your cell phone, they ask you, when do you want your bill? What date do you want your bill? And you told them. You said, I want my invoice to be, I want my bill to come in on this date. And guess what? They have you already, it, the information is already data entered into the system and your bill is sound, sent out to you and it tells you payment due by. And guess what? If you miss a payment, there's an automatic an automatic system that reminds you your payment is late and then they they're and if it's so late they're going to start calling you because guess what they're doing what I do which is receivables they're looking for you to, they're looking to collect their cash and here's the thing I joke and say it this way if you keep using their phone using their system and you don't pay for it they have this magic button it will disconnect your services <laughs> <laughs> so but I true. say that in, jo- in jest but, but the thing is I usually give a, a longer experience, a longer uh, explanation about that. But the point is, is that everybody who has a cell phone understands this because everybody knows that you, when you bought your phone, you went, you entered into a con- there was a sale done. You entered into a contract. Um, they did order fulfillment because they scanned the, your, the box of, of your phone. All the information was entered. They ask you when when do you want to be billed? You told them I'll pay you on this date, and that was that's that's what happens in business. Those are the five things that happens, and then they have notes. And they want to make sure that you're if you if you here's the thing if they notice that you're you become um a, a customer that's having problems they're going to call you and say okay do we need to change the date do we need to do something else and here's the thing even in business you 
his is two things. One, we're in the we're in we're in business to make money. That's the first thing. But secondly, we're in the relationship business. And if you have if you're having challenges making your payments, one of the best things you can do is get on the phone and talk to your customers and say, "Listen, I need to adjust this. I was expecting a payment, but I can't make this. Will you accept a parcel payment?" I tell people all the time that sometimes it's best to just be upfront and acknowledge that you're having problems making making your full payment. Can you accept a partial payment? And then what you're doing is you're showing good faith. Right. People forget right. about that because I mean everybody thinks everything can be solved when in 144 characters. No. <laughs> sometimes you actually have to talk to people and say, "Listen, this is what happened. Take responsibility for it. I'm not trying to not pay you. I'm just acknowledging that I've I've, I've hit a I've hit a I've hit a spot." I need to adjust for it. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking responsibility by saying to you, I want to fix this and I want to honor our relationship. I want to honor the contract. Can we can we make an adjustment? Can I pay you this today and then document it and you email it and say, OK, our contract was worth 10,000. I don't have the full 10,000. Can I pay you five? And then we'll say, great, I'll accept your five. I'm going to document that that we're we're changing the payment structure and that you're going to you're going to basically go on a payment plan and we're going to do you know, five thousand today and you know 2000 2000 and then 1000 but the point is that number one you keep the con you keep the relationship still intact number one number two you honor what was agreed upon and then number three you don't ruin the relationship and this is why i think why ar accounts receivable collecting the cash sometimes is really stressful because this is the part that most people don't want to do no one wants to have to go back and say i don't have it or i'm short or can we make an adjustment but here's the thing when you take responsibility for your business and you say I want to honor our relationship and I want to honor this contract and I need to I need to adjust this. Most people, especially in small business, you're there most people would rather get some money than no money and it's 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 best to really save your relationship by fixing this part. Hey, just popping in real quick to say two things. Thank you for listening to the Maximize Your Brand podcast each and every week. And number two, I want to let you know that I am offering a brand new program called Laser Coaching with Markeith Brayton. I know you have dreams. I know you have aspirations and things that you want to do. And sometimes you just need a little bit of accountability to get you moving in the direction that you desire to go in. I can remember back in 2014, when I first got laid off my job, I had a decision to make. Was I going to pursue my dream or was I going to go back to the nine to five rat race that I just did not enjoy. And the only thing that really helped me to make that decision was that I invested in myself and got coaching. And that coaching was tremendous in my making the decision to keep going and pursuing my entrepreneurial dream of becoming a professional speaker and a digital personal brand coach. And today, I want to make that same offered opportunity to you, that if you're ready to move to your next level, if you're ready to learn how to leverage your personal brand for a business, then this opportunity is great for you. Laser Coaching with Markeith Braden. It's a three-month time frame where you get up to 15 to 30 minutes unlimited laser coaching. But there is one caveat. You have to make sure that you finish the homework from each coaching session before you schedule a new one. And once again, it is for a 90 day time frame, and it's unlimited coaching, 15 to 30 minutes. You can schedule as many as you want, as long as you do your homework in between the sessions before you schedule your next session. So if you are interested in laser coaching and this offer, I want you to go to markeithbrayton.com forward slash laser coaching. That's markeithbrayton.com forward slash laser coaching. And let's move you in the direction that you want to move in because sometimes you just need a little bit of accountability to help you along the way. I look forward to seeing you signing up for Laser Coaching with Marquise Brayton. Wow. And you use that term AR, and I wonder if people really understand what that means. And she gave us the, the word for AR is accounts receivable. Yes. Accounts receivable. Why is accounts receivable? so important when it comes to tracking like 
what will accounts receivable tell us in our business? Oh, it will. It, first, first of all, it will tell you. It will tell you a couple of things. One, number one, it's it's the end of the sales cycle. So once you sell something, it tells you this is the money that's coming in, and it'll tell you whether the payments are due currently, like this month, April, or it'll tell you if you're based on your invoice. It'll tell you when is the money coming in. So for example, if you if you so you sold something, okay, your cell phone, best example. Your this whoever your phone carrier is no has accounts receivable on you because you have an account with them. They know when the money is scheduled to come in because when you agreed to go into a contract with them, you said, I, D. Bowden, I'm going to pay you on this date. Mm -hmm. And so they are tracking you by your account. They, they, they literally are tracking you and they're saying, you said in the store, I'm buying this cell phone. I'm going to pay it on this date. And they're looking for the payments to come in because that's how they collect their revenue for their business, just like if you bill a customer and you expect them to pay you on that date, that's how you collect your money. So the accounts receivable is basically the account that you have, that you, the account, the account is how, is how the, I'm sorry, let me try to break it down less corporate -y. So, sorry, so I'm making it this way. So accounts receivable basically is collect the cash. They use the cell phone example because everybody has one. Everybody knows that they are billed every single month by their phone carrier and they pay them. Accounts payable is when the company bills you and you get your document, whether in paper or electronically, accounts receivable is when you pay them. Mm -hmm. And that's how they track you. They track you. And that's and obviously when you as you continue to pay them on time, you actually you stay in good standing. It's when you don't stay in good standing, is that's when you run into issues when you have the question, it's like, okay, does this date not work for you? Do we need to change this? Or or are you having a problem? But accounts receivable is basically it's it's the tracking of your payments for your business and what you when i when i gave the example earlier about knowing how many customers you have every customer has there's a sale and then at the end of it there's there's the input there's three things it's a sale then there's the, the bill and then there's the payments what you're looking for is to make sure that when, whatever you sold you're going to invoice and then you're going to get paid and if you run into problems that's how you have to fix it which is means getting on the phone sometimes it's it's mm -hmm. It's um, adjusting all the all the all the nuances. Right, right. Adjusting the nuances is to get paid, and so I yes. think this is a good vein to be in, because you know many of us have different varying philosophies on how we collect money for our business. Yes, you know I use I use a couple of different ways, but I here most recently just wanting to use one uh, particular platform. But I have QuickBooks. Yep. I use Stripe, mm -hmm. and then my CRM is Keep by Infusionsoft, and so I've opted to collect all of my funds through Keep to keep right. track of everything and be able to invoice um, leveraging Stripe, but it is notated and tracked via QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to us a little bit about how should we be tracking our finances should we be having should we have an excel file you know should we be <laughs> using a platform you know how should we be tracking this should, what type of systems should we have in place in order to track these things well you actually just gave you actually actually marquise you just you actually gave the best example i am i am not an excel i'm not i'm sorry i'm not a quickbooks person i'm an excel person so i track this way i track with my clients i track by excel so i have the name of my customer the contract number, the amount of the contract, what are they? What do they buy from me? And so if they're say, for example, they're they're buying consulting services, you know, how much is the contract for? Then I have my dates when I'm going to bill them, and I have my dates when I'm expecting to get paid, and I have a section called notes. That's what I use. Now, if QuickBooks has something similar, you, it would be the same thing. And then you know, you have to schedule your date for when you're going to bill, when you're going to bill your clients, and when you're going to get paid. But I I personally I happen to like Excel, and of course, Excel doesn't pay me for this, but that's that's my system. And that's the system that's actually that's actually in the book because I teach you the basic way. Well, number one, you can once you get good. Here's my here's the thing. Once you get good with tracking, you can switch to another system. I just want you to get want want you to start to know that paying attention to the details in your business matters. So how many customers you have, how many invoices do you have that are outstanding, and when are you supposed to get paid? And then if you run into if if you run into any problems. I personally, I'm old school. I like notes. I like having notes on every client that I work on so that I know if we discuss this and they've said, okay, we have a problem. 
back in the notes, I have it, I have it documented. To me, it's no different than when you go to the doctor. When you go, when you go to the doctor, he or she usually they bring out your file. First thing they start do, they start, they start reviewing what had happened was, and then they they're looking to update, you know, any changes, any things. Well, and the same thing in terms of your 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 business. You if you're tracking things, you know payments that are coming in this month of April of 2022, payments that are coming in next month and the following months. And if if things are off, if you trick, I'm sorry, if you keep good notes, you'll know, okay, on, on this day, I need to do start doing follow up. Because here's the thing, the fortune is always in the follow up. The fortune is always in the follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. I had to learn that the hard way. Mm hmm. I had to learn that the hard way, the follow up process. And the reason why I mentioned some of those programs that I use is because I just truly believe in automation. And so when I shifted over to keep as my CRM and CRM is customer relationship management yes. uh, system, I think there's other acronyms for it as well. But in this particular system, which I use is keep by Infusionsoft, I have the ability to send out the contract through mm-hmm. Hello Sign. They sign that. Then mm-hmm. from there, I have the ability for them to click a link to pay the invoice. And if it is a subscription type or multiple payments, mm-hmm. it will automatically set that payment for uh, for draft on the same date that they pay the month prior. Right. So this way, I don't have to continuously send invoices every month, but it will automatically draft the appropriate amount from their credit card or debit card without me having to send invoices over and over again. Similar, like I have to, like in QuickBooks, you have to send an invoice every time. So I, I just good- kind of like that process. And the good thing about your system, which is which is great. And again, I I come, you know, my background comes from dealing with with, with government agencies and corporations. So a lot of a lot of a lot of the systems are not as uh, as automated as Markeith just explained. But the point is, is whether you use the system he just described, or you use mine, or you do something different. The most important part of the most important uh, takeaway for this is is tracking your sales, tracking your customers, tracking your invoices, and tracking your payments. And if a payment is missed. What do you what you know? What's what's your follow up plan? Are you calling them? Are you emailing them? Are you texting them? Are you doing all of the above? The point is, is that if the payment is missed before before you end up um, potentially uh, messing up the relationship, first of all, check check your check your check your system first to make sure that there wasn't a data entry error. A lot of t- I can't tell you the number of, number of data entry errors that happen, and people are are so quick to blame the other person versus checking your information first. So before you go to deal with deal with that problem confirm all your confirm that you have all the correct information in your system first then if the payment is missed then it's a copy of the invoice you're on the phone you want to have the have the exchange and then you want to get you know get to the meat of the matter which is the invoice is not paid and I'd like to know why and then how can how can we work together to resolve this because it isn't them it's both of y'all it's it's a, it's a it's not an i it's we my approach is we we have a conversation because um, if somebody comes comes at me, it comes at me, for example, and it's like, well, you know, you owe me money. You, you are, you're going to already be on the defensive. And it's like, I already know I owe you money, but I'm like, okay, can we talk this through? Mm-hmm. I've learned, you know, Marquis mentioned how much money I've collected. It's, it's, it's a lot more than that. But the point is, is that in order to develop that, to develop that skill, I had to learn how to problem solve. I had to learn how to do customer service. I had to learn how to do gratitude. I also had to learn how to ask the right questions so that we could get to the, get to resolution. Nice. Better get to resolution. So good. So good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. I know so, most people are like, oh, no, no, but I get really excited about this. But here's yeah. the thing. I feel like this, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, there we've got, you know, our audience is, is vast. We've got people that are still in careers. You got people that are that are doing the career and and the, the side hustle um, mm-hmm. and all, all things in between. I think that when you when and if you decided to launch a business, find something that you that brings you joy. I mean, people say you really love this. I actually do, I, because I like problem solving. And then, you know, there's 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 something about teaching business owners that you know the sale is you know collect the cash. The sale is not complete until the money's in the bank. And if you if you get that, then when you look at your business, you'll 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 learn to realize, okay, how many sales do I have? How much money is owed to me? How am I gonna how am I gonna resolve this? And then you're gonna learn just like you learned how to sell, you you learn how to collect because you you don't want to what I don't want to see the part reason I started this whole thing is that 
when I when that company closed that I used to work for, that was upsetting to say the least. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, fast forward to COVID. I, I sat and watched all the small businesses that were scrambling for the loans, scrambling for all the things. And I'm thinking, okay, I, the first question to me was, I wonder how many of them have contracts with other vendors that owe them money, but because they didn't want to follow up, they didn't want to start asking questions, they, they just decided not to do that. And so when, when I was watching COVID happen, and then more importantly, I happen to like theater. So when I saw Broadway, which is a multi-million dollar business, when I saw Broadway shut down, what crossed my mind was this, not so much that the shows weren't playing, but I thought about all the theaters that had small businesses that had contracts to sell t-shirts and tchotchkes. And I'm looking at them thinking about, man, all the sales that they were counting on in their business were, were no longer. And I'm thinking, man, that's a lot of revenue that they were banking on having that they didn't have. And I'm like, OK, how do we have this conversation about, you know, collect the cash? The sale is not complete until the money is in the bank. But more importantly, how do we talk about managing your sales and managing your AR so you can actually be profitable? Woo. That part. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, and so as you we're talking, I, I picked up two things. You got to know and learn how to sell, mm -hmm. but you got to know and learn how to collect. Absolutely. <laughs> they go together. <laughs> knowing how to sell and knowing how to collect go together. They're brother and sister. Most definitely. Kind of like us on, yeah. on, on, on the Greek side. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> so you've written, you've written a book. Yes, I have. And you're, you're sharing these principles uh, throughout your book. Talk to us a little bit about what was the inspiration to writing the book and having this movement called Collect the Cash? Great question. So so this is one of those. What had happened was is that my book coach, uh, her name is Sheree Robin, was actually doing a, a Facebook Live and she kept saying, you know, you can write a book in 90 days or less. And, he, and if y'all know, when you see people here telling you how you how fast you can write a book, you're like, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical about that. So she kept saying, D, you really, anybody, you can you can write a book in 90 days or less. And so, less. so what happened was I went to one of her webinars. We had a conversation and she says, tell me your story. So I told her about how much money I collected and, and how fast I did it. And she says, D, you have a system. Your why is that you want small business owners to win. Teach us your system. And so we decided to work together and... We worked on, you know, creating, you know, the first, the first, the first draft of Collect the Cash. And she's like, oh my gosh, you have a system. And and when she said, there are so many business owners that don't know this part, because we're there, you're taught a lot of things, but you're not taught about, you know, managing your sales and managing your, managing your money. You have a system. You can teach us how to do this and how, how we need to handle our customers if we run into this problem where we don't get paid. And so working with her and then getting a writing coach and then eventually getting published by Penn Legacy. Uh, a year ago, and actually this this month it'll be a year this a year this month that the book has already been out. And when I when I launched it, and when I start started seeing the results, I was like, wow, this is really cool because people have been saying, D, no one ever talks to us about this part of business. And I said, okay, so I decided to create collect the cash and and offer you know systems and processes and information that will that will teach you what to do. And the second part is to leave a legacy. You know, when I'm when I'm long gone. You know, you'll be able to go into whatever new system, whether it's Google or whatever it'll be. But the point is that collected cash will now will now be forever here. And it's a, it's a tool to help business owners stay profitable. Nice. Nice. So I see the book right behind you there. Yep. Uh, can we kind of go through some of the high level of the chapters in the book just to kind of hear what you're talking about? In the book sure well um first i don't have i don't have it right nearby but i can tell you what i remember of all, all the titles of this mindset over money um one of the things that's really important is how do you see money in business and how you think about how you think about collections is either oh this is really a problem or no i i sold my product or my service and i need to get paid so that's one are you first of all marquita are you a sports fan absolutely Perfect. So at the, the the last chapter in the book is called the collection zone, and I talk about pregame, game day, and postgame. Pregame is getting your mindset ready for if you have customers that owe you money. What's your thoughts about having to deal with them? Because think about it. if you have if you have customers that are challenging, or not. Sometimes you're like, man, I don't I don't want to get on the phone with that person this day. I don't feel like dealing with this. But your your pregame before you collect your cash is to get your mindset ready. So pregame is. What are you saying to yourself? What are your affirmations? What are you declaring about collecting this money? And then are you seeing yourself as being victorious? That's the first thing. 
game day is actually getting in and making the phone calls. Or if, if you know, in this case, you're making phone calls, you're doing emails. If you're able to go meet with the client in person, fantastic. A lot of people are doing more Zooms. So you, you may end up having a scheduled Zoom call, but you, you're going to do, do game day strategies, which is we need to discuss this account. We need to find out, you know, you know, the answer to the question, what had happened was, and then let them tell you the story so they can, so you can figure out, okay, how can we collaborate to result, get, get this to resolution? Resolution, it means getting paid. And then post game, as you know, if you're a sports fan, it's, it's celebration. I'm, I'm big on celebration. I, I usually have a clapper. I'm like, I got this big old clapper. We're going to clap this up. And I believe that you need to do pregame, game day, and postgame and celebrate your wins. And here's the thing, whether it's a dollar, 5,000, 10,000, or beyond that, I personally believe that celebrating every win, what it does for you, it gives you momentum. It, it, it reinforces that if you did this once, you can do it again. And so that's that's part of the part of the things in the book. So good. So good. Collecting the cash. Yes. Making sure that you are learning how to successfully collect the cash in your business, in your hobby. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> you know, well, anything that there's an exchange of finances, you need to know how to collect the cash. Well, Dr. D, is there anything else that maybe I haven't asked in regarding to helping small businesses learn how to collect the cash that you think we should? to cover or discuss? Well, I will say this. I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. If this, if this information has been, um, has been, has been beneficial to you, do me a favor, get the book, <laughs> visit, please visit www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. That's www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. I personally sign every single book and I want you to know that I value you spending your time and your money with me. You could go anywhere and learn, learn this information. But no one's going to talk to you about problem solving, customer service, or gratitude, and tracking the way I tra the way I teach you. But most importantly, please visit www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. One more time, www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. It would be my honor to sign and mail those books to you. And then you know, leave me a review. Once you, once you get it, take a picture and send it to me, and I'll, I'll shout you out on, on social media. Well, there you go. If you need to know more about collecting the cash, give us that web address one more time. www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. Well, Dr. D, I always am excited to have a guest, and I thank you for joining me for the very first episode of the sixth season of the Maximizer Brand Podcast. I am always elated around the information that we get from our expert guest, and today was no different. Dr. D does have a free gift that she would like to offer us, and that will be in the show notes of the podcast as well as in the comments of the video, which we are live streaming. And so I always appreciate my guests who have free gifts that offer uh, just in order for you to learn a little bit more about them and the services that they have. But before we go, I want to invite you to join my community. And today I want you to text, text personal brand to 77222. Let me center this real quick. Text personal brand to 77222. 222 and actually it should be all one word all one word let me fix that so that nobody gets confused behind <laughs> that so let's make it all one word here this is live so hey we got a way to do it live personal brand all one word to 77222 that allows you to join our community of brand maximizers, because I'm always wanting to share. How do you leverage your personal brand online so that you can grow your influence and impact your income? Because your personal brand definitely can grow your influence and impact your income. And I also want to invite you, invite you to join us for podcast maximize your brand podcast each and every week there are over 200 episodes in itunes stitcher spotify wherever you like to get your 
podcast. I invite you to be a subscriber of the Maximizer Brand Podcast. Well, I'm always excited that you join me each and every week. Check out the show notes for any of the links that we will provide. Also, we'll be providing those links in the comments. And join us each and every week live, live each and every week on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time for our interview with our guests, or I may even be doing a solo show. But I thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And just remember this. Always shoot for the top because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. Take care.